Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Sinew, and this is today's edition, Monday, 17th of June, uh, edition of the Chronicles AFC Daily. Had a few messages over the weekend, on Saturday in particular, asking me why I hadn't done one of these. Well, maybe I wasn't clear enough from the start, but the Chronicles AFC Daily is a Monday to Friday thing. I'd like to spend as much time with my son as possible. Uh, now it's the closed season and there aren't games uh, for me to get wound up about, frustrated about and, and into. Um, so that's why this is going to be a Monday to Friday thing. Of course, unless something huge breaks and then I'll be on it. I'll be putting out a video, putting out podcasts, etc, etc. Done my first um, live stream from my phone on YouTube the other day uh, when the Edu reports started coming out. Um so that's something that we could be doing going forward too. Uh, big thank you to every single one of you who is subscribed, uh, whether you're subscribed to the audio on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever, or on YouTube. Uh, we've seen incredible growth on the audio and the video content uh, in the last few months, and I'm really, really grateful. So thank you for your continued support. Hit subscribe, hit like if you haven't already. Now, the big news that's doing the rounds today is that Arsenal have reportedly agreed personal terms with Saint-Étienne defender William Saliba. Now, this was broken by L'Equipe in France, who are, of course, a very reputable uh, media outlet. Uh, they've spoken about the fact that Arsenal have agreed terms, but there is no fee uh, in place yet. There is no agreement between the two clubs as to what will be paid uh, for William Saliba's services. What is clear, though, is that Saint-Étienne are looking for the player to be loaned back to them for this season. And that is something that St. Etienne have done many times in the past in order to protect themselves um, in the short term. They did it with Kurt Zuma, I believe, when they sold him to Chelsea. They sold him in January and they made sure that he was there for the remainder of the season. So it's not a surprise that they're asking this. Um, lots of Arsenal fans have been debating me on Twitter this morning around this subject. Um, whilst I would be pleased with the signing of a player who seems to have a bright future ahead of him. And admittedly, I've not watched much of William Saliba. I don't watch much of Ligue 1, So I can't sit here with my hand on my heart and tell you that he is the real deal. Uh, but lots of people say he is. So I guess Arsenal will have done their, their checks, will have ensured that they know what they're getting themselves into with this deal. Um, but my only slight concern about this whole thing is that we are a team who are desperate to get back into the Champions League. It's so important for the future of this club that we get back in that competition ASAP. We need the revenue it brings. We need the status it brings. And only then will we be able to push on to better and bigger things. So my only concern is if the reports are true that Arsenal have a very limited transfer budget this summer, is it worth spending such a huge proportion of it on somebody who cannot make an impact right now because St Etienne won him on loan because he's 18 years old and he's probably still not uh, ready to feature in the Arsenal first team week in week out so you know if we're in a world where we can get the Saliba deal over the line whether it's paid in installments etc whatever needs to be done and we can go and get somebody for the here and now then I'm absolutely behind this deal and I've got no issue with it whatsoever but if it was going to restrict us in bringing a central defender in now to help, because we've been so bad defensively over the last few seasons, then I'm not sure about this one. And that's not personal to the player. I'm not saying that those who say he's good are clueless or they don't have any idea what they're talking about. I just think that if, and I emphasize the if, Arsenal's budget is as limited as we're led to believe. We need to prioritise and buying someone for three, four years down the line is not a priority. That's all I'm saying. Not against the signing if we can do something else too. According to Get French Football News, Arsenal are edging closer to a deal for Lorient winger Alexis Claude Maurice. Uh, the Gunners have reportedly had two bids already turned down for the 21-year-old, but we are now... Uh, said to be willing to pay the 20 million euro fee that Lorient are asking. Uh, Claude Marie scored 14 goals last season and got four assists in 35 appearances in Ligue 2. I think that's how you say two in French. And, uh, yeah, Ligue 2. Um, 
and I guess what he would be would be a cheaper option um, in terms of a wide man as opposed to going out there and spending what Dali and Yifang are asking for Yannick Carrasco. Um, I've made no secret of the fact that I'm not particularly keen on Arsenal signing Ryan Fraser. I think our money could be spent better. Um, and again, very similar to the Saliba thing with Claude Maurice, I've got my doubts just because I haven't seen a lot of him. And I, what I don't get is Arsenal fans who have never seen any of these players play standing there saying that these guys are the next big thing. You're better off just saying you don't know, mate, because when things blow up in your face, you look like an absolute moron. And all these ITKs, et cetera, et cetera, the same goes for them. Don't say anything if you don't know. Talk about reports. We're entitled to talk about reports, but we don't know um, what we're going to get from these players as Arsenal fans, because let's be realistic. Who turns on their TV on a Sunday night and watches Ligue 2? Nobody. So don't make things up. Ran over. Anyway, um, he has been spoken of in high regard by Jeremy Aliadier. Of course, friend of the podcast. He's been on uh, with me here a couple of times. Um, and he said he came across him during his time with Lorient and, and acknowledges that he's a very, very exciting young man. Fingers crossed um, it all works out. Uh, but I again, similar to the Saliba point, is he going to make an impact straight away? You'd hope so, but there are no guarantees. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see how this one develops. And I don't want to sound like I don't like any of these players or I'm against the signings. I'm not. But if you ask me, would these signings convince me that Arsenal would have what it takes to get back in the top four? My answer at this point would have to be no. And that's not out of disliking the players. That's out of pure... I guess, not knowing that much about them. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm an expert on French football. I'm not. As many of you will know, the Premier League is, is my bread and butter and as is Serie A. It's another league that I really, really love and work a lot on. But in terms of the French League, I'm not clued up. I would be lying if I said I knew lots about Claude Maurice or Saliba. Um, but it seems that Arsenal are very keen on bringing the pair in this summer. The reports linking Lucas Torreira with a move away to AC Milan just won't go away. Um, as I've said before, I don't think there's any substance to it. I don't think that Arsenal will sell. I don't think Arsenal will budge on this. Um, and I think this is just a convenient story to write, given that um, Jean paulo has gone in at Milan and given Torreira's recent comments regarding the lifestyle in England and that he enjoyed it more in Italy, etc., etc. I think those comments have been blown way out of proportion. Uh, and given all those factors, it's just an easy story to write. So I wouldn't be concerned uh, about that one at this stage. Uh, we understand that David Ospina has joined Napoli on a permanent deal. Four million euros, I believe, is the fee that uh, people are speaking about. And uh, I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed in this. A, because I feel like David Ospina could do a job as a number two at Arsenal, given that Petr Cech's moved on. And B, because... If we were going to sell him, you feel like we could have got a little bit more for him. Colombian international uh, was part of the Colombia side uh, that beat Argentina in their Copa America opener on Saturday night as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, just feel like we could have got a little bit more out of David Ospina uh, if we were adamant that we were selling him. So, uh, yeah, that's where I stand on that. Not much else to report on today's Chronicles AFC Daily. Thanks once again for tuning in. Hit subscribe, hit like, etc. Do what you got to do. Uh, and a big thanks to those who have left us reviews on iTunes recently. Much appreciated. And if you haven't, please uh, head over there and do so if that's your preferred uh, platform of listening. So uh, thank you very much once again from the bottom of my heart. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another Chronicles AFC Daily, bringing you the latest transfer rumours and stories uh, surrounding our magnificent football club. Until then, ciao.